Welcome Craftinooners, welcome back. I'm Kat and Jo here again. We are today going to show you how to make one of these beautiful everlasting floral wreaths. Now you should all have your kit, you should all have all the items in your kit including your instruction sheet and uh, Jo is going to talk you through it. Okay let's start. Okay so when you when you get your kit I would lay out everything you've got. You've got your ribbon. I would put your ribbon to one side because it's quite pretty. We don't want to get loads of foliage on it. Put your wreath ring to one side as well. And just have a good, and your wires, your stub wires, they can be popped off to the side. We don't need those yet. And then I would just have a good sort through what you've got and sort it into genres. So you've, you can just break it into what you've got. We've got some nice grass there. Pop that off to one side. We've got some other grass here as well. And then we just, we're just we just sorting through what we've got from which we can start building up our picks. Got some bay there. Now the foliage is quite delicate, so you're gonna have to be reasonably careful with it. Um, it will take a little bit of handling, but it's it as it's not living, it's not quite as pliable. Got your gypsophilia there. That's really nice for a filler. Got your larkspur, your white larkspur. This is a this is a pink kit. But we also do a lilac tone kit as well. Okay, so I'm getting now I'm sorting out everything I've got. And then from this, I'm going to start building my picks. These little pink flowers are very delicate, so I'm going to pop those off to one side for now. OK, that's sorted it out slightly. So you are aiming for as many picks as you can make. So I've been making lots of picks here. Hopefully you're kit will have enough to make six, aim for six to eight picks, little posies of flowers. I'll just demo how I make one of those. Bunch together some foliage, put a pink flower in there too, and then using one of your wires, quite thin these, they're really easy to work with, literally wrap it tightly, carefully and tightly, because as I said, the foliage is quite delicate, wrap it round and make a nice little posy buttonhole from which you're going to place on your wreath kit and then just twist that wire back on itself and you've got a nice little posy there to work with. So I've used most of my foliage here, all of my foliage to make my little posies. I just need to tidy them up a little bit Okay, so I'll just demo, demo what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to cut off the length of that wire. It's tight against itself. And I'm going to try and make the stalks quite short. And I'm going to do that for each of the posies so they're ready to lay on the ring. So my posies are all ready. My picks are all ready. I'm going to grab my, my hoop and my jute string. The jute is what you're going to use to naturally, it's a nice natural look and you're going to bind all of your posies onto your hoop with this. So leave a little bit of a length because it may be that you want to use that at the end to fashion a hoop and hang, hang your wreath. So just literally wrap it a few times, nice and tight, and then just tie a really basic single knot, keeping it as tight as possible because you want it to have a bit of traction onto that hoop, onto that ring. And then I'll do another one as well. So it's nice and secure and a good anchor to pull against. So I've got my jute string attached, which is ready to wrap all my little posies around. But I'm just going to talk a little bit now about the design. I like to set all my foliage off to one side, but you might choose to do some, some design down the bottom. So let me just demo some of that for you. So I would use my tallest one and then just work my way around, laying it flat against each other and using the jute to bind it so that it 
it fans out nicely that way. But you might choose to have all your foliage equidistant at the bottom. So again, just choose, choose a couple of posies that look well together. And then you would, and you, you would have tied your string at the bottom there. And then maybe you'll have it splayed out to the side with your bow in the middle, totally up to you. But I'm gonna, for the purpose of this YouTube, I'm gonna show you how to do it all down one side. Okay, so my design is all gonna come down the left-hand side. So I'm gonna choose my largest pick, place it flat against the wreath ring, push it down quite nicely, and then use the jute to wrap it. And again, keeping it nice and taut, because this is what provides the rigidity to the next posy that you're gonna put down, the next pick. Keep it nice and taut and hold those stems against the floor hoop. It's quite tricky this bit, but the, the more you work it, the easier it becomes. You've got plenty of jute, so you can afford to wrap a couple of times. And once that first one is secure, the second posy against it, will it will all start to come together and it will sit nicer. And I'll get another posy layer against, and then using that jute, move that down a little to get fullness. And then using that jute, wrap it tightly around those stems against, against the floral hope. Now, it might look quite messy, but with each one, each posy you lay on top, you will hide what went before. And that's quite key getting a nice fullness at the top, which will hide that jute underneath. Put another posy down, lay that there. Tuck a bit behind and keep wrapping. So I'm quite happy with that, but I just want to fill in places when I've got, I've got a few extra little bits that I want to use. I want to use everything I've got in my kit. So I'm just going to use something like that to just poke through just gives it a little bit more fullness okay and with a teasel as well I'm just gonna literally stab it's got quite a rigid stalk I'm just gonna poke it through some of the other foliage just gives a nicer little look like that so clearing down your, your workstation I'm now going to affix my ribbon and I like to put my bow here and I just like a very tiny bow but I'm going to use again one of the stub wires and I'm going to tie my bow around the kind of hairpin of that and then use that to wrap around that last little bit there. You all know how to tie a bow. I, I, I could show you. So I've tied my little velvet bow there and I've used my stub wire just to thread through there. So I've got two ends that I'm now just going to put at the bottom of my jute wire and literally tie that wire and wrap it off against itself so it's nice and tight behind. Twist it back a few times and then you will want to trim, trim those ends of wire once you're happy with where it is. So I'll just do that now. So my ribbon's on the bottom there, that looks really pretty. So now I'm just going to talk about the hanging. Obviously it's very heavy down one side. So when you actually hang it up, it might fall down this way. So what I like to do is I like to get another stub wire and using that length of string that we've got there, attach that together and then make myself a hoop out of the wire that I can hang it. And then that holds that weightedness to the top. But you might have other ideas. You might want to just hang it directly. Hang it directly on a, a screw or a nail on the wall. But bear in mind, it will be weighted. So if you want it all down one side, you're going to need to put a rigid hook there with the stub wire. Have you finished? Your... Yeah, I've finished it. It's amazing. They look pretty, don't what, they? What's the difference? So we've just got two, two different colour hues. We've got a li lilac tones that pick out with the purple. And then we've got this lovely dusky pink ribbon with some more natural foliage. But they're really lovely. They're available made by us 
or they're available as a kit on our Etsy store. Etsy says. store, along with other kits to make macrame yoga mat straps and pot holders yeah. and a whole host of other things coming your way. Yeah, so go and have a look. Thank Lots you of much. mindful making by Crafting in Hope. Thank you.